The development of agriculture in the European Union has come under the spotlight this week here in the European Parliament. The EPP group has organised a hearing looking ahead to the future of farming after 2013 when the Common Agricultural Policy, or CAP, is to be reviewed. The sector will face many challenges in the coming years, from genetically modified food to climate change, from land management to animal welfare. Agriculture in the EU accounts for about 2% of GDP, but almost half of EU spending. With so many other pressures on the EU budget, some have questioned whether agriculture should continue to occupy such an important position in the EU's agenda. But Albert Dess, the EPP's coordinator on the Parliament's Agriculture Committee, is adamant that the cap should be seen in the context of its contribution to building European integration. The common agricultural policy is an important element of European unification. And if it were to be regulated nationally, then we would not need the European Union. We would again have competition distortions with enormous disadvantages for our farmers. What are the advantages that a staple agriculture policy offers the consumers? The advantage is that 500 million Europeans get access to fresh foodstuffs, that food safety is ensured. In this sense, the agricultural policy is the cheapest policy for the consumer. And which advantages do the farmers have by a stable agricultural policy stretching over several years? The farmers need security for their investments. Only if that is ensured over a longer period are young farmers willing to invest in agriculture. Under the Lisbon Treaty, MEPs will now have co-decision power with member states on farming policy. Previously, national governments alone were responsible, so it's a significant change. But the CAP is a cornerstone of European integration, and although there are questions about its future, there's no question about its continued existence. Dashan Sholosh is the commissioner responsible for agriculture and a member of our political family. If the CAP is not actually the oldest policy, then it has been built. It has evolved simultaneously with the European Union. We began with a farming policy for six member states that was focused primarily on food security through production. And today we talk a lot about quality. We talk about diversity, about the environment, animal welfare. We talk about the different types of farming in the EU. That shows that the CAP has demonstrated its ability to adapt itself to the way in which the EU has developed. I can assure you that it will be able to adapt itself in the future too, and that the CAP will always look towards the future, not the past. Joseph Dahl, EPP Group Chairman, also addressed the hearing. As a farmer himself, he's proud of the EPP's contribution to the development of the CAP. Today, it is a policy to feed 500 million people. It's in that spirit that we are going to hold this debate, focusing on globalization too, on what's going on in the world. So I have requested that we hold hearings, that we invite farmers, that we invite agribusiness and all others involved in agriculture to have a real debate. After, we will first look at the budget to see what the allocations for each sector are, and then we'll see what's allocated to farming. And then we will be able to ask the question, what agricultural policy do we want? The political influence of the agriculture sector remains substantial, and that's largely thanks to the EPP group, which has placed a vibrant farming policy at the heart of its vision for Europe. For more information on our group's policies on agriculture, please visit our website, eppgroup.eu. Thanks for watching, and see you again soon.